I know you're listening. You're here because something isn't right. Something feels twisted, upside down. Things don't add up. Hello, human. Welcome to our twisted universe. In this episode, we talk with Allie Gilbert, the voice of the Down the Rabbit Hole podcast, about her out-of-body experience. Hi, and welcome to our Twisted Universe. Today, we're going to be talking to Allie Gilbert. She's a truth seeker, and she has a podcast on Spotify called Down the Rabbit Hole, Uh, She has a really interesting story she would like to share with us about divine intervention. Um, Hi, Allie. Welcome. (laughs) Hi, guys. Thank you for having me on tonight. Of course. Absolutely. We heard about your story and we we saw a video of you and we really enjoyed your podcast. And we just wanted to, we really wanted to get a firsthand accounting of what happened that day when you had spirit, uh, the source, God, what do you want to call your higher creator came in and, and really saved you? I think it's it's an incredible story. Um, do you want to walk us through that? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, it was the Friday, um, September 2nd. So 9-2. I'm into numbers. So um, as I share this story, I'm going to kind of um, intertwine some numbers with it. That's how my brain kind of processes um, things these days. Well, always has. Um, so it was September 2nd, 9-2, and I was driving down um, Interstate 29, so it's the reverse date, just just notice that, whatever, um, and I was heading to Sioux Falls, which is in South Dakota, um, on my way to a festival called Shangri-La, um, first time ever going to this festival, um, didn't know the, the name about Shangri-La, where it comes from. Um, I've heard the name before, but I didn't know the source. And um, so, yeah, I'm heading there and it's about maybe four, four in the afternoon or so. Um, and I had stopped off at a rest stop for about 10, 15 minutes uh, to use the restroom and, you know, get a couple of bites to eat. And um, so I was about 15 minutes behind schedule. And then um, as I'm driving, I see some cars backed up. And this is um, at exit 109 um, off of I-29 in South Dakota. And or a little bit past that. I think it was mile marker 113. And so I'm slowing down. And time kind of slowed for me at that point a little bit for some reason. I mean, it was just, you know, and I've never had any issues slowing down um, on the freeway, you know, back home. I think back home, we also have those electronic signs that kind of warn warn you ahead of time when accidents are going to happen. Uh, here, it's a little bit uh, or a lot less populated, so they don't have those, you know, up above. So you have to rely on people's um, ability to be, you know, alert behind the wheel. Um, so I would notice a, a car coming um, from I the, going northbound on 29 and they had their lights that they were blinking and I just noticed that and I thought hmm, is something wrong with my car it just kind of made me a little bit mindful more so than um, what I already was and I you know couldn't really see you know I'm thinking you know none of my lights were on indicating like a door was open so but I just kind of at that point started to pay attention a little more um, and like I said time started to shift at that point and um, then I saw ahead that there was cars backed up and I was like, oh gosh, you know, an accident. Like we always say, you know, and um, a lot of us do We're like, oh, and not thinking of the circumstances of what's going on with these people. I was just thinking about my destination being in my own little self. And I was listening to some music. I was actually thinking about Lucifer and Satan to be truthful and that the, um, groups of people in um that might praise him and a friend of mine who um was in the music industry who i think might be compromised um i was listening to their song and i was just kind of thinking about the bigger picture spiritually the dark side to be truthful not that i love the dark side but just thinking of how it controls so much um in this realm so much 
so <laughs> much. And, and then also how close it can hit home. Like this person, you know, I really cared about and to kind of think that, you know, they might be compromised. Um, and I swear I heard Phoenix from the ashes um, in the lyrics um, in the song. And I say that though, because I've gone through my playlist from that day and I can't find one single song with that in there. So I just wanted to say that because it bugged me. And I mean, I just did it two days ago. I'm like, I know I heard Phoenix from the ashes, you know, right before everything happened. Um, and I thought it was in some lyrics of a song anyways. So I heard Phoenix from the ashes thinking it was in the song. I don't know. And at that point I look in my rear view mirror and I Satan. Now I'd already was thinking about satan lucifer and everything and um but then it was just like right there and it's like the scary movie where you see you know a car coming at you someone looks in the room just like the movie you know they look in the rearview mirror and they see something coming and i um i didn't freeze i just like accepted it like okay first it was satan like they're saying like in them to come take me out like like that's it and this acceptance came over me and I said, okay, that was very profound. Um, I said, okay, and I don't know. Um, I looked up the definition of okay because um, it was so profound that I'm like, what does okay mean? I mean, I know we say okay all the time and it also means an agreement. We you know, you know, like, okay, like an agreement. So I don't know if I agreed for spirit to come through at that point when I said okay or if it was a deep soul acceptance of the circumstances because I had to accept it in order for me to um, act accordingly and be a defensive driver even though I don't think I was the defensive driver at that mm -hmm. moment you were offered something at that moment like choose you can choose I, not that I consciously like I was it wasn't that I was offered it in the sense of like I mean, it could have been. That's an interesting take. What I recall is that it was okay. Like, okay was, like, loud. Like, okay. Um, I feel like intuitively, as I look back on it, that it was a deep acceptance of, you know, accepting there's a car coming at 80 miles an hour, you know, and I'm sitting, um, well, I was, like, you know, pretty much standstill. Um, and so it was, like, an acceptance of, what was about to happen um but at the same time i don't know if it was also an invitation for spirit to come through and i i say that though because what happened right after this so i said okay and i knew it was gonna be inevitable probably i was gonna get hit but what happened was i turned my wheel to the right and i say this to everybody as like a public service announcement that if you're ever on a freeway or even not, you have your wheels turned to the right and be in the right-hand lane. So if anybody does come in and not notice, you're not going to get sandwiched between you and the other car, you know, you're at least going to get propelled off to the road, hopefully. Um, and so I turn my wheel to the right. I'm still in my body at this point. So I turn my wheel to the right and I'm just, I mean, I probably barely started to go in that direction because I was trying to like get off the road and I got hit. And when I got hit, that pushed my spirit out of my body. Um, I felt like I was at least 10 or 15 feet above the car. Did you feel a sensation when you popped out? Well, I instantly, first I remember thinking, Sh shoot, you know, like when I got hit, um, I'm still, it's kind of like before, before I left, I remember thinking, shoot, like they got me, like I got hit because I was trying to avoid it. And then. I went out and I was thinking of my cats and how much I love them. Don't you have and a kitties, orange kitties, my orange kitties. <laughs> um, and they always come to me. I, my house was burglarized like four years ago. And the first thing I thought of when I got the phone call, when I was burglarized was, you know, where's my cats, you know, like, so I know now at the end of the day, it's not the possessions, you know, it's my animals, you know? Um, so I thought about my cats and one in particular, and I, um, I love them all and just how much I love them and how I, um, I guess I would be sad to leave them, you know, or just, but not like, I mean, I'm a little emotional when I say this, but when I thought that in that moment, as I'm going out of my body, 
I didn't have sadness as I do right now because I'm here in the 3D but it was like a love like I love them you know just that love and when I opened my heart up to that love it opened me up to a bigger realm of love at that moment where I was connected to that love and that all and I had to maneuver still so it wasn't like I had an easy way to get around because there was still a car in front of me even though I was trying to get off the road and I remember being up here but driving down here like I there was like I mean because I had to go like that I mean it was like a race car driver how I had to drive to get around this other car because you're dealing with a momentum of 80 basically 80 miles an hour hitting you so you got to like really steer that vehicle you know um yeah there was just it was like many amazing moves that I don't feel I did because I'm up here and it was driving from high up like I connected and I was driving from high up and I've done other things mind altering things in my life and typically with those things, it's normally a horizontal, to be truthful with conscious expansion. It's nor I never really thought about that until now, that this was a vertical. So there was a difference between the two. And um, so, yeah, so I'm high up. I navigated around the car in front of me and basically coasted along the side of the freeway. And then just like that, I come back down into my body. And I'm just parked on the side of the freeway. And I looked, I forgot to mention when I'm up in the air and, you know, I'm navigating, I look in two of the cars because um, there was two cars in each lane. So only one car behind me got blown off the road. So I was, I would have been sandwiched. I would have been the main brunt of this car that came in this van because he came in sideways. So he basically came in, took off the car behind me and that, you know, two cars in both lanes off the freeway and then I would have taken the main hit because you know um the other cars were gone but I look to my side and I see these two cars being blown off to the side of the road as I'm up you know um you know driving the car and then when I come back down into my body and I'm parked along the freeway I instantly thought of the people like it's like you know the people like what's you know there's two cars that are totaled on the side of the road and so I get out of my car and I go over and um one car the family gets out and they seem okay and just like once again we go back into that movie thing where it's just like a movie a lady screaming and I don't know if the car is going to blow up um and she gets out on her own somehow the door her door both of the her doors it was a four car uh, four car sedan and um but that she was able to get her door open on her own and she's screaming and crying that she was my children my kids and are my babies and at that point but she's frazzled like she can't and another lady runs and holds her and I was just there and for a moment I froze like I don't know if these kids are going to be dead I don't know if she's even looked at her kids because her, you know, she had, um, you know, she was in the front seat and her, uh, you know, what's it called airbag went off, but I hopped in and that was a moment too. It was a moment of like, okay, here I go. And I went in and thank God all through there's three children, two were not in a car seat. One was, um, I, at that point, another um, firefighter came over and on the other side of the car and got the other two children out. My hands were shaking. I don't have kids, so I'm not familiar with car seats at all. Um, and I was trying to like, somehow I didn't push that red button. I was like trying to figure out other things. And um, eventually, you know, we're talking like seconds, I was able to push the button. And then at that exact moment, some another firefighter volunteer firefighter came and pulled open that back door and got that little baby out so um, I didn't get that feeling of being the hero in the sense of like holding the baby and getting out of the car that's also ego too but it, lo locking eyes with that child I'll never forget because there was still at least a good four seconds five seconds which is a very long time um, in that moment not knowing if the car is going to blow up not knowing she's screaming what she wants out and um you know my hands are shaking and I couldn't get her out 
but the thing that's amazing with this whole thing and even the sheriff said it, it's like a needle in a haystack because everybody walked away and that is a serious accident i mean very serious so that's amazing truly god's hand was involved in this god <laughs> and just to finish it with the accident was you know we had stopped for another accident and that other accident involved the same make and model as my car. And I would have been there for that accident. But I remember I stopped 15 minutes, you know, um, you know, at the rest stop. So I feel like either way I was going to be in an accident, you know, possibly just by these two um, situations. But that accident, you know, a car had clipped that other car and that it made, which made that other car roll into oncoming traffic. Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, what they told me is they didn't walk they had to go to the hospital because their car rolled but nobody hit that car you know because imagine a car rolling into oncoming traffic and like it rolled all the way and eventually went to the side of the freeway and um, nobody hit it I mean everyone had to stop really quickly but that was also a miracle you know I mean it's a tragedy and a miracle you know um so yeah I just yeah it's amazing Going back to your story when you were hovering up over your body and you connected to the love of your your pets and then a deeper love, would you consider like that the oneness um, mm -hmm. unit? Mm -hmm. Were yep. you given any messages while you were in there? I mean, do you have any takeaways from that? No, I mean, just the oneness, the, um, the love, you know, um, definitely was strong acceptance, you know, um, surrender I mean, acceptance, surrender, definitely. Um, and I think my spirit, you know, I had to be willing to let go of this realm, you know, I had to be willing to let go of this 3d. Um, I heard something recently that really stuck with me. Um, actually it was from KRS one, which he's an old school rapper guy. I don't know why I somehow stumbled upon his channel, but he said something that was really profound. And this ties into this is he was saying, we're not fully in the 3d, right? Like, yeah, we have our 3d, you know, our bodies and stuff, but like, like when he did an interesting, like analogy, like when you hear yourself speak, like, you know, when you hear, then you can listen to yourself and you can talk to yourself, you know, those are all different dimensions. Like your soul is like, you know, in the fifth dimension, maybe more, but like, you know, experiencing this three dimension, I've heard it in different ways, you know, in different religious ways put, but it was just an interesting way of putting it in that sort of context. Um, and I say that though, because I feel like that's what broke through, right? Like that fifth dimension soul got activated and, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm speechless in a lot of ways about it. Cause I'm like, what was that? Cause I had never experienced something like that before. I've watched a lot of accounts of um, near-death experiences, and they often say that you have the option to leave your body before the damage. And I, I'm wondering if that was part of it. Like you didn't, you didn't want to experience. Um, you can decide whether to experience that damage or not. And mm -hmm. I've always heard that um, that your body can pop out before tragedy and I always believe that and I wonder it sounds like you were able to pop out so you didn't have to go through all of that physical trauma that you might have experienced um but it's really quite interesting that you were able to your your body your brain and your body your your meat suit continued to operate Although your soul was up above that, <laughs> that's really cool. Um, Joe's had a, an experience like that before where he left his body, um, during, uh, I was, I was, uh, 14 and I was diagnosed with, uh, diabetes, um, found out via having the flu and then, uh, my blood sugars got to a point where I couldn't hold down water and they took me to the ER and. I'd lost a whole bunch of weight and uh, um, my veins were all deflated. They were trying to get an IV into me to administer, you know, saline and what have you. 
yeah, and they were having trouble finding one that they could get a good good line on. And at that point, I was really kind of out of it. And uh, it was interesting. You said the whole you, it was a different experience from uh, uh, the spiritual journey where you went up rather than than sideways. And um, I had the same experience. Uh, they're they're working on me. I was sitting up, and they were working on me, and I was watching them trying to put the IV in, and they were not having any luck. And then the next thing I know, I'm like a I'm above them looking down at the whole scene. I'm not really part of the scene at that point. I'm just kind of watching it like it's a show. And then um, I see him str still struggling. And and then I, I find myself standing next to the doctor as they're working on me. And I'm like, no, try right there and telling them where to do it. And and every time they jab me, I mean, I, I felt it. I was screaming at him. I'm like, nah, that hurts. Stop it. That's not the one, you know? And I'm like trying to guide him to one that I felt like was the right location. And um, so that went on for a while. And finally they got it working. And um, and then I, things just, everything just kind of went black at that point. And I woke up the next day and I, at some point I was talking to my mom about what had transpired and, and uh, so didn't he hear me screaming? I, I mean, I was screaming at him. He was, I knew which vein was the good one. And she said, you didn't move. You didn't flinch. You just sat there and watched him. You didn't say a word. And I was like, well, I was standing there, yeah, <laughs> which makes no sense. I was standing there right next to him, telling him, pointing at where to go. And uh, um, it was one of those things, you know, are you, are you familiar with the silver cord? It's kind of a I guess an old schoolish kind of thing now, but um, it, I could see that too. And I've had other experiences where I've seen my silver cord and, and it's, it was really fascinating because um, I just felt like all I had to do if I wanted to was just shimmy up that cord and not have to deal with this world a whole lot anymore. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a, another it, it struck me when you said you went straight up and, and I'm like, Oh, that's what I did. So it's, it was an interesting corollary to my, to what my experience was a co commonality. I mean, well, and it's, yeah, my mom, you know, used to do astral travel because she mm -hmm. was into the occult before she had me. And she would tell me, you know, yeah, about the cord and like, you know, picturing, you know, try, she tried to train me, you know, about like hovering above the ceiling and mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, picture yourself and then, you know, you can go outside, you know, after a certain point, I never was able to do it, but, you know, um, but yeah, like, I, and I think it's interesting what Christy was saying, which she's heard about people have the, the souls have the option to leave their bodies before the pain, the severe pain might right. happen, you know? Um, and I don't know if I, like, the thing is, is like, I knew it was going to happen. I think that's the reason why, because I knew looking in the rear view mirror, 80 miles an hour, you know, this freeway, people are probably going 90 to be truthful. Yeah. Right. And so we're, you know, we're in standstill traffic and this car's coming in. So I knew like the severity on my, in my logical brain, this wasn't going to be, you know, this would be, you know, this could not be good. <laughs> And um, so I think that's why I don't know if that would have happened necessarily if I didn't have it in my brain, if I didn't look in the rearview mirror and I just got hit out of the blue. But because I knew that's I feel like, you know, more so because I, I was still in my body when I turned the car to the right because I didn't get hit yet. Right. So I was just trying to navigate to get away. But yeah. as soon as that impact happened, it was like I thought of my cats. So I don't feel like when I thought of my cats, I was just starting to go out. So I was thinking of my cats, which ties me to love, right? So cats yeah. are love or like what people think of their children. So it was basically love is what I naturally gravitated towards, right? you know, and that's, I, you know, I've heard other accounts with, you know, near death experiences where it's always love that they feel, you know? Um, yeah. And I didn't feel like it was conjuring. It wasn't like I was trying to think of love. It was just like the first, it was like so natural, you know? I felt very calm, but I must have opted to feel the pain because I felt the pain um, when they were struggling. And and maybe I was just still, maybe I was only halfway out or something and I was still connected to the, the pain. But I, I felt that, but it was still, I felt like I was standing there. 
and the doctor just wouldn't listen to me. I'm like, look, <laughs> you, you just, oh, you missed again. You know, it's like, it's like eight or nine times of trying and they're like about ready to give up. And, and finally, finally, they go and stick the spot that I was telling them and everything was fine. <laughs> Interesting. And I, Chrissy mentioned it too, how it was, my soul was going up, yet my meat soup was driving, right? And not just driving, but like, I mean, we're talking like, you know, race car driving, you know, there was a couple moves I and mean, it wasn't a ton, but it was at least, I would say two quick moves, like really quick. I remember that. Um, and so I felt like, cause my soul was up here or consciousness, whatever, that it felt like I was driving from up above, but so I wasn't like down and, you know, I wasn't down driving. So I don't know if source came through and was driving the car. You know, I was connected Probably. to that, you know, intelligence, that knows how to drive like a race car driver, <laughs> you know, like Angels. or what, but, it, but I, I bring that up because you were saying that you were, you know, standing next to the physician and yet you were also feeling the pain in your body. So it's like, mm. now we're talking like different, you know, two like a um, interdimensional stuff going on. That's, that's, yeah. It's, it was a re very strange experience for sure. Um, you, the way you described the steering the car, it's almost like when you were, up above your body you're steering the car like a matchbox car kind of thing doing you know what would normally be an impossible maneuver what's a matchbox car <laughs> or hot wheels you know the little the little cars kids play with. that's a great way of putting it <laughs> you're like no go that way <laughs> that's so true <laughs> that's exactly what yeah yeah it, yeah and it was so quick at the same time right because like you know we're talking mere seconds with all of this um and yet time you know ceases I, oh and another thing that was interesting was you know I was like I was saying earlier you know what my thought process of what was leading up to this you know um thing of Lucifer Satan you know people being compromised the music industry and the music that was on um, my thought process it all turned to static which was interesting. Like it kind of like, boom, goes out the door, you know? Cause at first after this whole thing happened, my like, gosh, I better like stop thinking about Lucifer so much. I wonder if you were aware of something around you that was unholy or something yeah. like that. And then also the fact that the car was flashing its lights at you. That's really strange. Um, so I didn't hear anything. That was the thing. It all just kind of went away, like a quietness. Like okay? it's kind of like when it snows and it just softens everything. That's a perfect way of putting it. Why do you think the car was flashing lights at you? To warn. I mean, I would think to warn everybody. I thought that they were doing it to warn people. Perhaps that they saw they saw something. something you weren't seeing. They were the accident. So I think that maybe because that first accident was just, you know, up the road. And since they, they, you know, I can't believe that they don't have it here, but whatever, they don't have signs up warning drivers that, you know, there's an accident, you know, you better slow down. I feel like it was, you know, yeah. Warning, trying to warn the best that they could yeah. given the circumstances. That's crazy. No, another thing that what I do you think from the being above is you, you felt the love and I, I felt a, a very strong calm, like complete absence of fear or worry when I was when I was looking down upon the scene when I was being worked on was was like kind of like on a day you work really hard and you're tired and you finally get to lay down how good it feels to just take a load off. It was like, ah, oh. and and you know, here I am in this like emergency situation, <laughs> but oh, we're losing. She's back. Did did you hear that part? I was talking about the the calm I felt. I didn't hear that. No. Oh, yeah, we're having connection problems. Um, so when the when I separated from my body and rose above, and I was looking down upon the doctors working on me and and me, um, I felt very peaceful and calm. You said you felt you felt love mm -hmm. all around you. That that's kind of the the feeling is is just this 
this calm, like there's no worries uh, whatsoever. Just, just total peace is what I felt until I went back to yelling at the doctor to do it right. <laughs> well, and it's interesting how death, you know, or these moments, tragedy, you know, that, we, you know, we live in the shadow of death our whole lives. And they promote us being, you know, to get be scared of death, right? I mean, look at what everything's happened the last couple of years. You know, they can get people to jump on a dime because of death. Right. And so it's like, and yet when it happens or close to it, it's the opposite, you know, for most people, right? You felt calm. Um, not that I want to experience that again. I mean, I've taken me a month just to kind of ground myself back in this 3D realm. Um, and I'm still grounding. But you know, it's interesting how like, yeah, like I, there, like, I, I don't know why I just think of like the, when it first snows and there's that blanket over everything and there's that quietness, it's that same thing that just kind of like wow. covered my thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It totally blanketed my thoughts, blanketed the music, you know, the music, it all just went like snow covered on it. So what do you think um, the Phoenix rising? Well, I mean, I'm going to, I spent like literally what two hours listening because I went back because you can go through your playlist you know um, I didn't know you could um, so I went back to Spotify went through September 2nd you know and I was like I need to find that exact song because I thought I was listening to a certain song but now I'm like uh, I don't know if that's right um, because I thought I was listening to this person's song that I was um, you know used to be friends with and then you know but then I'm like they don't have Phoenix from the ashes in their lyrics. And hmm. so, but I heard it distinctively, distinctively you know Phoenix from the ashes. I think it's you. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I think yeah. it's you. you. You had a other dimensional self communicating with you. Kind of like I had one working on me, my, one of my other uh, dimensional um, layers I view the multidimensional universe thing as layers of frequency stacked on top of each other. And to experience one, you have to, you have to be able to raise your frequency in order to perceive it and interact with it. And if, and it uh, kind of sounds like um, you, you got a warning from your, your, uh, yourself in another time frame or a time you know another dimension, dimension. yeah <laughs> sorry i struggle for words sometimes mm -hmm. but um and so you were getting you you're getting a heads up from one of you that has already seen what was going to transpire <laughs> interesting are you saying like the warning being the phoenix from the ashes like that was the warning uh, or just you were given a message that you, this is going to propel you forward yeah yeah you're getting you're getting a message like you know this accident happened and 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 from that you're gonna rise it's a trigger it's a yeah a download or a, or a, a as christy likes to put out a download from from spirit um yeah it'll make sense at some some point i i get those every now and then i'll wake up with this weird like epiphany that makes absolutely no sense but as i as i go through my day and maybe several days all of a sudden it all starts to organize that thought starts to organize and and all of a sudden i have this realization about some aspect of existence or life or whatever the message is i finally get it but it takes a while to process it and you have to well, especially because there's Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Well, especially because it's so deep, right? With these like epiphanies that it makes sense. It wouldn't just be a quick, you know, realization, like necessarily, you know, like it has to simmer or, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a genuine epiphany, like something that like kind of rocks your world a little bit uh, as opposed to just realizing, so, you know, like, oh, I left my keys on the dresser. It's <laughs> mm -hmm. not an epiphany. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes there's just triggers that wake people up, like you know what happened to the World Trade Centers, or you know the uh, 
the situation we found ourselves in the last yep. couple of years around illness. Um, that woke a lot of people up. <laughs> well, even woke me up. <laughs> even my frequency layer thing came from one of those downloads where I was like, I woke up and it had all been laid out in front of me, like a diagram of it in my in my mind when I got the message, but it didn't make sense. And then Christy and I were talking about something later on, like the next day or something, and all of a sudden it all fell into place. And I came up with that that thought of of how how that all fits together and how you can you you can interact with your different dimensional layers. And, but I still don't know how. They're, yeah, I, time is happening I, now. Yeah. Right. Right. All time is is it exists now. Like the person you're going to be is happening now. The person you were is happening now. Yeah. Time, time <laughs> is time is a theoretical construct of this dimension. Right. Well, and that's really like I remember saying that in the interview that video was you know and i'm not you know but it was like it felt like timelines were merging like you know what i mean so it was like the softening of the snow or you know everything getting quiet connecting to love big picture you know oneness but quantum reality right i'm kind of to the point where i think we can all exist on different timelines simultaneously yeah like your reality my reality may not be in the same uh, layer of dimension like how are how dense do you want to live how yeah do you want to live like you know we have that choice <laughs> yeah. and and time isn't necessarily linear <laughs> but let me just throw this in because i can't help it i'm a scorpio so i'm always i won't go down that because that's a whole other rabbit hole i could go in and tie into <laughs> this situation so I won't, and I really appreciate the depth of the spiritual aspect that we're talking about, but it has to do with time. So my question is, and what are your guys' thoughts on, so if time is not linear and it's all happening, do you believe that there could be, um, let's say, you know, like there's movies about it where they can send agents into the future, right? To like, it's like they could, you know, things can be manipulated possibly because it's already, they already know what's going to happen. Yeah, I believe. Well, if you're asking time travel, I believe they have the ability to do it. I but, mean, just watch The Simpsons. But it's <laughs> it's kind of a quandary, though. I just it just occurred to me. OK, they could time travel. Great. But if everything's happening simultaneously, what good does it do? <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, if it's all like if if now is happening and tomorrow is happening, why bother traveling tomorrow to tomorrow? It's already happening. <laughs> it's it, it, you're gonna blow everybody's minds yeah, now. We're getting a little too. I get it. I it's a uh, you know it's a theory. <laughs> I'm a nerd, and I love it though. I do. I mean, I love it, but I get it. Like, yeah, it's good. I guess with the, considering the audience, you know, having I know that your probably your audience is into mostly this sort of stuff, but it's easy to kind of like do the what ifs or like you know the, um. But I just I just thought of that just because you know there was just some you know some some i can't say the word peculiarities um with this accident that just made me go huh you know like besides this beautiful spiritual things right but i just then i just my brain did go huh like if the future already happened and somebody like wants to like take out a truth seeker maybe they could because you know they already know that i'm going to be on this freeway at this time <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, if that's what was happening and you were aware of a, a darkness, um, they yeah. got shut down by the light. <laughs> and they don't necessarily take you out by killing you. They, they alter your course so that you interesting target. Sorry. I think I started to get us running down yeah, a no, rabbit no, hole. No, yeah. <laughs> Oh. just would you mind just quickly elaborating on alter the course versus okay. take out so your life is taking a path right and you're on you're on a path to do some something in the future the 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 time manipulators 
see that and they don't want you to do that. Well, if you look at, at time as a physical thing and you're going down this road, they don't want you to take this road. They want you to take a different road. And so they'll cause some kind of event in your in your path that causes you to go off course and do something else. It's other like than the that Terminator, thing. but in a lesser degree. Yeah. And so they'll, they'll nudge you <laughs> off course and you're still going down your path, but you don't realize that you've been veered off of where you were supposed to be. And but so if you, you ever watch you the just, time it machine, seems... it's still going to happen anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I got to watch it now. I, I don't I haven't watched the time machine. Are you... Terminator, yes, but not the time machine. It's the, right. It's called the time machine, right? The You know what yeah, movie I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a book too, but yeah. And well, there's another thing, one of the Marvel movies where they're talking about altering the timeline and you can cause it to shift, but it'll always go back to its original course. And 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 uh, that's as far as I can understand that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it goes back to what you're saying. What's the point of manipulating it if it's going to go back? To the right. Point? Yeah. And if it's already happened, why? Why? Yeah. I think um I think it's altered re realities more so and like the mandala effect. Mm. I believe that people experience different happenings and Nelson Mandela um that's how it started. They thought some people remember him dying in jail. Um they remember the whole timeline of that he died in jail, but in my timeline he got out and you know, lived his life, the rest of it, and he became a powerful person afterwards. That mm -hmm. happened on my timeline, but a lot of people distinctly remember him dying in jail. And that's where this all started. It's like, what reality are we all living in? Are we living mm -hmm. in different ones or the same? I don't, I don't think we're living in the same realities. Interesting. Well, I mean, and if you think about vibrations or like how you put it, like with denser frequencies, I mean, even in that sort of belief system or whatever energy vibration that's absolutely true but then when you take it to a timeline taking those energies and those vibrations and putting it in a trajectory I hate it, a trajectory as a timeline then that opens it up to the whole other quantum reality stuff you know yeah. not just like hippy dippy energy you know I don't know I I think that it's way more complicated than any of the collective set of theories that we have right now about how things work. I, I think, I think it's, it's, we, we, we kind of get little pieces, but not enough to really, to really get it. I think our bodies yeah. have to die and our souls have to be out in the ether before we can comprehend it. <laughs> yeah. You got to see the whole thing, not just, not just like the outside of the box. You got to see what's in there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I came close. I mean, even that oneness is like a yeah. lot to be able to, and I'm sure, you know, with you having that experience yourself, you know, I think having that, even just that one, like I didn't get, you know, the inner workings of timelines. I mean, I had a vague feeling of like quantum realities or I felt like, I felt like timelines were merging. I do at the soul level. So maybe there is some possibilities of trying to take off course or whatever. Cause I did feel like there was these timelines merging. Um, I don't know what's going to happen from it because I'm just kind of living my life and yeah. making choices based off of that. But it did feel like this kind of intersection, feel like an intersectionality of a whole bunch of stuff. Like your, like your thing in the background, you know, like that uh, sacred geometry, you know, like that was happening inside my, my sphere, you know. Um, and it's hard because my brain wants to know everything, you know. I just want to know, and it's yeah, I have to let that go, you know. I really do. But, um, but yeah, I think the, the closest for me is that oneness with that love. That's so cool. I hope that gives um, our viewers some peace knowing that, you know, a lot of people have experienced this. There's nothing to fear with death, nothing that, you know, unless, you know, unless you've been a, a bad boy or girl your whole life. Well, <laughs> I don't know where you're going where, where on you're that one. <laughs> really attached to your physical being yeah that then it's hard to let go but if you're not and you're more connected with your spiritual being i i think it's easier because you you've kind of already you already know mm -hmm. you're okay 
so since your accident and this incredible experience, um, how do you think it's affected your life? Well, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I think about going to rescue that little baby. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm like, Fearless. we never know how we're going to act in situations. I don't even know how I'll act again if that, you know, a certain situation would happen. But now I can 100% say that at least one moment in my life, I was a badass, brave person, you know, and you I had love. Like, I didn't care about any of their belief systems. Once again, that all was static out the door. It was like a human being in a car with children. I mean, they were all just life. And um, looking in that child's eyes, um, you know, was just on, so profound. And someone had mentioned to me that that child was also symbolic of myself, right? My own inner child that I'm trying to get out of the car seat, the proverbial car seat. Um, and also the children that we can't save, you know, in the future or now. Um, so it was interesting how that can also be taken into other contexts besides just the literal. But the literal is very profound for me because it was like I hopped in a car not knowing it was going to blow up and I had already gone through my out-of-body experience you know just moments before that situation so I think it was also a test right of my character yeah um and I don't I'm not trying to you know make myself all high and mighty but you know it's worth saying you know because I've never in my life had to encounter something like that before you know I've had to be brave you know like we talked about in the last couple of years make decisions you know based off of my my ethics or morality, but you know, this was just next level. Um, and so I'm happy that I, um, that I have that in me. And I think that I carry that with me is to answer your question. Like, how do I feel <coughs> after, um, I, you know, I'm glad that I have love for other people because sometimes I don't feel that way. A lot of the time, you know, society's, you know, whatever, you know, we both know that. So I, um, so that's good. And I, um, you know, that first couple of weeks being at the house, knowing how fragile life is, you know, I watch people get in their cars and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're driving in their cars. You know, that's a death trap. Um, and it, it was only because that veil was taken away. Cause that's always the possibility, right? We all can succumb to different situations and accidents, not just within cars. So I had to come to that in myself, you know, that it's, that veil was taken away from me and I just, you know, know the risks involved. Um, but that's always been there. And I had to like, just kind of sit with that for a while, you know? Uh, it's a process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so, a process. I, I definitely think um, after all this, that you're going, your, your <clears throat> doors are going to open for you. Um, and growth this um this experience for you is going to it's going to catapult you forward and you're going to discover more and great things and um it was meant to happen because you are waking people up and you're helping people navigate through mm -hmm. this crazy <laughs> last few years and um, all the things that we've been experiencing, um, you know, you've been kind of like a beacon for some people and they're going to come to you um, for more information, for sure. We'll just see what you discover. <laughs> well, and even being like invited to, you know, be, um, you know, on your program. I mean, that's, you know, a huge thing of like opening up doors and just, you know, having my story told, you know, I think that this is a testimony of that too, you know. Um, and yeah, and I wanted just to share, I have my Bugs Bunny shirt. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> Bunny. And someone had mentioned that I'm like Bugs Bunny, not, not because of the accident, even though it was kind of Bugs Bunny moves, um, <laughs> it kind of takes away from the spiritual stuff. But, um, so it's nice having a little bit of that humor, but then also kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of like Bugs Bunny in some ways, you know? And, um, Thank yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> that no that's the no face, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, that's the no. Then actually, does he have the no? No, I guess no's not on here. But that that's what he, that was the. Yeah. <laughs> Joe and I were joking was, about that shirt. Like, that no. face. 
<laughs> That's funny. Yep. I had um but, um with us like in the last couple of weeks yeah. we were laughing at that. <laughs> I never knew that, that he kind of stood for no. That's how he came up. Well, no, his someone. faces. No, it was a scene from one of the cartoons, but that's but what. It, like, okay. the that's the face he was making. That's he was saying he no. In a funny <laughs> way. <laughs> Long drawn out sort of way. We should all say no together, right? One, two, three. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we did, you know, two and a half years ago. So yeah, we all said no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a powerful word. Yeah. But yes is too, right? I mean, yes oh, yeah. is also powerful. <laughs> well, and no, okay, apparently. That. You know, me saying okay, I think that's a powerful word now for me, at least personally. That's interesting. You know? I would dive yeah. deeper into that. So something I wanted to say when you said you didn't have you didn't know you had it in you to, you know, go and save the child like you did. And after the fact, it's kind of a comforting thought to know that you, to then have confirmation that you have that strength within you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of empowering because you, you know that you're going to be solid in a in a yeah. situation. It's it's you know it's not like oh I'm gonna I'm I, I'm not you know you're not sure if you're going to do that if you would do that again. I can almost 100 percent guarantee you would because you did and successfully and so you you less fear the next time i would like to say that i um first connected with you when oregon was having all those fires i don't know if you know this but you were out rescuing the kitties that were all abandoned out in that fire you are a warrior you're a hero <laughs> yeah. yeah i did do boots i did do boots on the ground as um well, we were in September, and we were in September, and so I had a lot of the Facebook memories were coming up from that time two years ago, and it just brought up a lot, you know, of um, emotion for me, and just, you know, that kind of I think started kicking off my, um, really my truthing movement, right? Because I was like there, you know, seeing things firsthand and weird fires, <laughs> weird fires, weird patterns, you know, yeah. and. And, you know, and once again, yeah, I mean, I care, I do have a heart for the downtrodden and those that are stuck in cars that might burn up, you know, yeah. like. That's pretty down. Um, <laughs> but point. yeah, no, but, I, but just to, I think I mentioned it, but I don't feel like this is the thing with that experience was that, I mean, I feel like a badass in that sense that I risked my, my life to help somebody, a child, but at the same time. I was shaking so hard that I couldn't get this child out of the car seat. You know, I couldn't find the button. So technically I didn't even save this child. Someone else came in from the back and grabbed her. Um, but it was like, because I don't ever feel really good under pressure. Like, you know, I worked with behavior kids in the school setting, like hardcore behavior. And I was more of the emotional, social kind of person. Like I would have probably would have been better as a, like a therapist approach, you know? Um, which is cool, but I'm not one of those people. It's like, I mean, there's some people that can go in and like, you know, when kids are going crazy and I mean, they just, I'm like, what? I mean, I, I, don't, I feel like I'm not really good under pressure. So I just, I had to say that. I mean, I know words are powerful and hopefully in the future I'll become maybe better under pressure, but at least I tried, you know what I mean? Like, and that's enough. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, oh, yeah. But that's cool that you brought up the kitties and the fires, and I oh, didn't know yeah. that that's you connected. So absolutely, um, were you in the fire zones? I mean, if you're in Vancouver, or... we're in Vancouver, so we yeah. we didn't really, you know, it was affecting our air quality, but um, my heart was going out for all the animals that were so. <sighs> oh, so you were one of the pet pages, possibly? Yeah, I, I that's where I first started talking to you. I we were yeah. going to help, but. We just didn't end up doing it because we're not as good as you. <laughs> <laughs> you have well, kids and I don't. <laughs> I, the smoke was so thick where we lived in Vancouver that, um, I mean, just walking out to the car with a mask. And there I was wearing a mask because the smoke. Yeah. And it was still challenging. I feel sick just in the moment it took to walk to the car. And, uh, you know, I had to run to the store and all. And it's like, take a deep breath of fresh air in the house, you know, the stale air in the house. <laughs> And then hold my breath to the car, and get to the store, and, and uh, 
yeah it was it was uh it was hard there yeah i can't imagine being out near the fires and 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 uh running around in that all day long that would that would be rough well you know that remember the sun remember how eerie that sun oh, was? Yeah. oh yeah christy got a picture we had we had received a package and she got a picture of the the fedex or whatever truck out in front of our house and the sky was just like crimson and it was just this eerie picture of the the silhouette of the truck and the guy coming out the door and all of, all the light sources were all just this deep crimson red and um and that's just in town. Well, you, you know, saw this, you saw the sky. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was like another that's, another planet. It was, it was like was being really in bizarre. hell. Yeah, it was very <laughs> it was like being in hell. Oh, well, like I drove I remember going out to Estacada. I did a live stream and it was closed at a level three. And I'm going into smoke. Actually, that's it. I take it back. I've done other things that were kind of a little like badassy. Yeah. But yeah, that was pretty scary. But I drove into it not knowing if I'm gonna encounter a firewall you know, because it was level three, but I was told that the town's still open, you know, even though technically they were, you know, supposed to evacuate. And I'm so glad I went because I met like, you know, great people that were like serving food to all the firefighters. And even though the government was trying to tell them to get out of their own town, they're like, no, we're staying. And that's exactly why Estacada and Malala didn't burn to the ground straight up because the, the farmers stood there on their property and hosed it down. Meanwhile, you had some state people, you know, fire people um you know telling them to leave who would fight the fires right right you know so yeah i can uh, that's a whole other rabbit hole on the fire i mean there's just so much that's to that another rabbit hole a whole different. there's so many rabbit holes it's like <laughs> oh yeah okay actually you know what i never thought about bugs bunny is a rabbit too i don't know why bunny rabbit like i didn't somehow i separated the two but he's a flipping rabbit <laughs> it's, it. it's terribly easy to digress <laughs> go go down a rabbit hole they're all around. Yep. <laughs> how would one um connect with you or find your podcast so you can go to well speaking of rabbits so down the rabbit hole on spotify um i believe you have a copy of or i can send you of um the image because there's several um, more than several um podcasts that are called down the rabbit hole i probably should have come up with a different name but i just kind of that's kind of summarized where i'm at um so such is life but so i think that um the picture will kind of distinguish my um that it's my rabbit hole and not another person's rabbit hole <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah and picture huh is it the Alice in Wonderland picture? Yep, with yep, the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So it's Alice in Wonderland with the two little. I mean, I guess there's several Alice in Wonderlands with the rabbit hole. Um, but we'll yeah, I think there's a logo up there. Yeah. Huh? We'll get your logo up there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm not tech savvy. So, um, but yeah, so down the rabbit hole. And um, I only have just one episode that I created so far. And it's going to just be, you know, well, as we already know, right, there's so many different topics in the rabbit hole. So um, I think I might touch on social engineering, my next, my next one, heads up to those um, starting in kindergarten. I think kindergarten's a good start, you know, sure. so um, <laughs> yeah, so and it's on Spotify. And yeah, like I said, I only have one episode so far. And I don't know, I'm going to try not to do too much content, you know, maybe like once every week or two, you know, I'll do and i'm going to try to keep them to maybe 30 minutes maybe a little bit longer it just depends but kind of gear around that marker um enough time for people to go to the grocery store and back to listen to it it's kind of what i was trying to think of you know that's great yeah i just wanna... and then i want to show you my kitties really quick oh, hold on here we go let me turn it around <laughs> say hi <laughs> say hi Oh my goodness. It's a kitty, orange kitty army. There's another one too. I don't know where he's at. He's somewhere. <laughs> this he is like, hold on. Oh, he must be upstairs. Say hi one more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something to okay. get. Oh, and then I have another one. Not to be like weird. Okay, I'm going to be weird. Hold on. I have one more cat. Well, I have one more cat that's alive, but then I have this guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's mr marley he passed away 
But he had such beautiful <laughs> fur that I kept him. <laughs> you know, we People love be like, that's it. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Allie- People are fine if it's a wild animal. You know, but if it's a domestic, so people are fine if that's like a wild fox. They're like, oh, it's a wild fox. But like, if it's a domesticated animal, people just get weird about that. <laughs> I, uh, I I think it's totally fine. I mean, I have no uh, feelings one way or another. I, I think it's kind of cool that you can bet his fur when you miss him. Yeah. And he's such a gorgeous coat. I mean, he was like, oh, his fur was like the size of like a a bob kitty you know he's a pretty big cat yeah not cougar but you know bobcat <laughs> or whatever yeah <laughs> so yeah but it's been a pleasure i really thank you for having me um share my story and yeah we'll be talking with you soon and i can't wait to catch up on your next episode on your podcast well thank you thank you for you know um sharing that you know on here too Okay, Holly. Well, have a great night. Okay, you too, guys. Thank you too for sharing your stories and your your soul experience. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs>